Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are going to make, once again, something from the Fallout world, and this is a helmet that I think fits my cosplay pretty perfectly, uh, which is the Super Mutant Bladed Helmet. It's got like a little hatchet on his forehead. Kind of has an old-timey helmet flair to it, uh, with the, the bill in the back and the little place it come down the side. So today we are going to make the Super Mutant Helmet from Fallout 4. Let's get to building. Found a reference image or two on a Google search and also looked at the in-game model just a little bit. Then I came up with this template. Cut out the template, trace it onto your materials, and cut it out with a hobby knife. I use 6mm EVA for the base of the build. My templates have a cover page that explains all the markings you see here. Most phones don't support PDF files, so you need to be on a PC or download a PDF reader to your phone in order to read the template. I heat form the top of the helmet on a round glass globe to help round over the edges and make it easier for glue up. I also put a little bin on the sideburn plates to turn it in towards my face. Add contact cement to the edges of your pieces, let it set until it's no longer wet, and then start closing up the darts. Once you get both sides closed up, use the registration marks and connect the two halves together. Time to assemble the whole base of the helmet. You may notice that the sideburn pieces are a different kind of foam. This is what the foam from Cosplay Apprentice, and I needed these pieces to be a little sturdier than the rest of the foam. It is 6mm EVA also, it's just a little denser than the lighter gray you see here. There are marks on the template to help you line up the sideburns, then attach the bill to the back plate and add that assembly to the inside of the rest of the base. Your seams on the top don't really matter that much. They don't have to be good because most of it's going to get covered up with these overlays. There are a total of five. The middle one goes straight down the center seam. There will be a left and a right side for numbers two and three overlays. Push them up against the middle edge, then work your way around flattening out the rest of it. The very ends of them flare out a little. This can be achieved by heating them up and bending them out.
The earpieces are simple, just two pieces stacked on top of each other. The center donut is not centered with the base circle, from what I can tell from the reference images, so don't stress about getting it perfectly in the middle. I am leaving enough space for an 18mm EVA dowel to fit under the edge of the cap. This center wedge holds the blade that I am about to shape in the next clip. After I contact cemented it into place, I flattened the curve a little bit so that it fit the blade better. I also evened up some of the edges that were sitting a little proud. The blade is pretty simple. I made it out of two pieces of 10 millimeter EVA sandwiched together. I carved out the shape a little better with a box cutter than refined the shape with a Dremel. The blade is rusted and heavily battle damaged in the game, so I get the edges close to smooth, then gouge out areas at random. Here is where I added the 18mm EVA dowel. To make it sit better on the helmet, I flattened out a 90 degree wedge on it. Working slowly, I make one pass on a side, then my second pass I take out an adjacent edge. This leaves a wedge that can then be glued onto the edge around the cap all the way around. I also go ahead and battle damage the whole thing up using my Dremel while I'm at it. Some little details to add on before paint. I cut out four bolts out of EVA to go on the overlay strips. Behind the blade in the center of the helmet there are these chunky wedge spikes. That's how I'm gonna describe them. I just cut them out of some scrap 24 millimeter EVA foam that I have laying around. They need a little curve on the underside to fit on the helmet curve. Once that's done and shaped I can super glue them into place. I know I don't show this step a lot in my videos, but anytime I am making something out of foam, right before the prop is painted, it gets a quick heat treat with a heat gun to close up the foam so that it doesn't soak up all the paint. Then once that's done, I hit it with two coats of Plasti Dip. To match the rest of my armor, it gets a silver, brown, and black spray paint for an aged metal look. I also hit it with a clear coat to seal it in. 
The Super Mutant has these wires that appear to hold the blade on the wedge, so I drilled some holes in the ears for the two of them to attach to. I used three 6mm EVA dowels and one 8mm dowel. They feed through the two holes in the blade. The back two wires tuck into the vents in the back plate and get super glued on the inside of the helmet. To dirty it all up and pick up on the details of the battle damage I carved earlier, time for some acrylic washes. I take some black and brown Platifex paint, water down my brush a little bit, and then smear it all over the cracks and crevices of the helmet. Then simply wipe it off with a paper towel. It usually takes about two or three passes to get the desired layer of dirt variations. Just like the rest of my armor for this build, I am using Modern Masters Metal Rust Effects. It's a three-step process that puts actual rust on your props, not a sponsor. The first layer is a red-orange primer layer. You lay it on thick and let it dry. Layer two is an iron layer. I make sure to cover all the primer and I go a little over the edges of it. Lay it on thick and wait for it to dry also. With it being hot in Texas right now, this stuff dries up pretty quick on my back porch. The last step is the spray on rust activator. Wet all your areas and let the rust slowly appear before your eyes. I usually make two passes with it so that I get full coverage and more random variations. If a spot doesn't look rusted enough, you can just hit it again. It also reacts to my other metallic paints on my helmet, so you get a lot of variations that you don't expect. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, I really like this helmet. I definitely think it fits the sturdy metal armor build a lot better. It's got the same choppy metal pieces thrown in there, plus the rust. And it, side by side with it, it looks like it goes together. I would have a video clip of me with it on so that you could see it all together, but as I finish this video, my wife is at work and I need help putting my armor on because once you get the chest plate on, it's kind of hard to get the arms and everything else on. Uh, so I'll definitely uh, piece together a photo for you to see it all together. Uh, but I'll, I'll definitely record myself with it all on and give you a full build out, dress it all out for you. May even have a professional photo shoot just to put it all together to make it look nice. Uh, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make this helmet yourself and impress your friends with your ability to slay evil mutants and take their helmets that are supposed to be bigger than your body because you're just a regular sized human and they're super mutant, but it somehow it works when it transports to your head. That's true. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you. 
How'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. Definitely has kind of a old timey helmet vibe to it until you get all up on it. But let me hit you with my forehead cleaver.